let's jump into a little Q&A, my favorite part. Ah, let me get rid of this banner. Hello, everyone. Mad Cow says it. David's here for his daily dose of uh, sweat coin information. Funny how Terra is nothing for anyone. So as I understand it, there's a uh, warrant out for Do Kwan, and they're looking to revoke his, uh, his passport, which means he'll have to go back to Korea. And if that happens, then he'll be picked up right there by authorities. Not looking good for him. I got to tell you, I was surprised he did that documentary. Uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago where he actually talked about those things. I mean, I don't think that was the best idea, but maybe I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> what can, what great, when can we expect a terror refund? <laughs> That'd be a good one. And or, Robert's back. And or Corey Klepperstein, Klepperstein's guy's Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the guy from Swan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a good day. I don't know what that is. Darth Mike, who is now a new moderator, getting back the same amount of crypto is a better outcome than getting a cash payment, even as dumped around 40% since those go up. It's true. You know, I wonder. I mean, that's what I would I would assume they would do it the lesser of two evils. Like, what was uh June 11th, what was the, let me take a look. That's interesting. Let's just go, hold on. Let me share my screen. Let's go back in time. Oh, I just missed it. June 11th. I was trying to, hey, I got to tell you, if, they, if they're okay with it and they say, no, we're going to give you back 28000 for your Bitcoin, okay, that's fine. But they'll probably, but they'll probably pick the lesser of two eels and go, no, no, here's your one Bitcoin, which is now worth 19817 What? 19000 Guys, this could be your last chance to buy Bitcoin under 20 k I'm just kidding. That's a joke. Ah, funny stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my voyage is all good. Now we have to wait. Exactly. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Hey, Mad Cow. Yeah, I will switch over to the Costa Rica green screen in uh, 30 days, matter of fact. Cardalonia on Cardano. Yeah, it's always amazing to me. Golfer, how many takes off for the Q&A? Usually, I, it's funny, because usually like, I get more people in the Q&A, because they just kind of filter in. Because, you know, YouTube, uh, they'll sometimes tell you that uh, Rob's live, but sometimes they don't. Oh, my man Guy. Guy gave you a huge shout out today on his live. Very nice. <laughs> oh, man. I got to tell you, that was a fun event. When I went down to the UK and, and did the interview with, uh, with Guy, yeah, it was fun times. He's good. He's got a good group of people around him. Good dude. Good guy. Uh, let's see. By the dip. Your thoughts on El Juan Sanchez Avalanche and Solana? I own both of those. Hope they do well. It just depends. You know, like Peter Thiel, the investor, he had this pretty good statement. He just said that uh, competition is for losers. And he says, really what you want to do is, is get into an area where there's not so much competition. And uh, then you can dominate and you can grow your business before all the, the competitors come in already, and you built a moat around it. The thing with uh, Avalanche and Solana, and people will say, well, Solana, the transactions per second, and eh, it's a little centralized, but eh, no big deal. Maybe, I don't know. And uh, Avalanche remains to be seen. I, like, uh, I still like Ethereum and uh, Cardano and Polkadot which is kind of funny because those are kind of like, they're all the Ethereum mafia, if you think about it, because Vitalik, Dr. Gavin Wood, and, and Charles, they were all part of the Ethereum Foundation. So, and now here they are spinning off their things. Uh, wow. Jared says, it would be great if the 3AC guys would also have their passports revoked. Well, it didn't. And as I understand, they're 
some place in the Middle East. I want to say Saudi Arabia or something. I don't know. Corey says, that doesn't seem right to me. I was grand, grandpapa into the urn. This means, that means I won't get anything back. No, that's not what they're saying. What they're going to say is what they said in that, in that, that document. And we talked about this yesterday, I think. There was, and this does not pertain to anybody outside the U.S. There was Earn, where you put your crypto in there, it would earn so much, and they were doing some wacky stuff. But then there was also, there was custody. And the only reason that, the, that Americans had custody was because the regulators came down to Celsius and said, we don't like what you guys are doing. This doesn't make any sense. And they were right. So we want you just to, to put this in some way and separate this from the, from the crypto that you are lending out to God knows who and doing whatever else with it. They said, fine, we'll do that. They said, okay, we have a custody account and a earn account. And in the terms and conditions, right there very clearly, it does state in the earn that they own your crypto. But unfortunately, they didn't get around to it as far as the terms and conditions to talk about what would happen with the custody and since it's a gray area, they say that that does belong to people and they're probably going to give it back. Are they going to give it all back? I hear there's a cap around $7,000. So whatever. So Corey, they're probably going to give something back at some point, but I think there's a lot of minutia going back and forth. And I think one of those is they want to start up this, this new business called Kelvin, which good luck to you. I mean, there's... There's really two scarcities in the world today, trust and attention. Those are really scarce items, trust and attention. It's so hard to keep people's attention, very hard, especially in uh, the way that everything works with technology and social media, things like that. And trust is even a bigger thing. Uh, trust is a commodity you can't buy. So when they talk about Kelvin's going to be their thing, I'm like, you know what, go for it. And then people did remind me, they go, Rob, you're a little naive people will, will go for it. And you know why? Because they'll forget about this stuff in two, like I said, two, three, four years. They'd be like, Kelvin, that kind of sound, I don't, well, they probably might be even new to crypto. They'd be like, we don't, they don't even know what Celsius is. If they can bag Mashinsky and keep him out of the, out of the forefront, they will probably do a lot better because then people are like, oh, this Kelvin's got a, it's got a great thing. It does uh, swaps and it does trades and it does multi-sig wallets and NPC. Before you know it, that business goes up and, and the revenue and the profits that they yield from that can go to paying people like me and Corey. So just one of those things. Uh, okay. Well, I don't know, man. It's a funny thing to me that uh, people with a lot of money seem to not get caught, except for Bernie Madoff. He did get caught, but he didn't have any money at the end. So what are you going to do? That's a good one. Colum says, hey, Rob, do you think people staking ETH will get the the ETH, no, it doesn't, that's not how it's going to work. So remember, stakers, stakers, like, like they said, are now the new miners, essentially. So if you can stake 32 ETH, you're good to go. Or if you want to stake with a, with a crypto exchange, <laughs> good luck. I'm not doing that. But uh, yeah, so uh, the big question, though, is when you're staking your ETH, what's the yield going to be? Some people have, have quoted 10 to 15%. I know other people said, now it's going to be like 5 6%. But still, with those... I got to tell you, he's going to do great. Don't get me wrong. I think a lot of things are being built on it. It's looking pretty good, especially with this, this transition. They did it good for them. But uh, when I look at it, and as far as like staking, if you ever stake with Cardano, it is seamless. Now, Cardano's got its own problems. I'm not going to say that. But I mean, like Cardano knocked it out of the park with staking. Just crush it. There is no lockup periods. There's no slashing. It's super simple. It's super cheap to do. And uh, it's awesome. With ETH, totally different experience. Actually, I really shouldn't say because I don't stake my ETH. So what am I talking about? I just read these things. All right. Bobby shouts. Bobby, photographer. I like the beard. Thanks. It's going to go away pretty soon. I think I have to shave it. Because I got to... Some sunspots and things I got to get rid of. We'll see. Ah, Billy McCullough. Hey, Rob, near protocol. Any thoughts? I got to tell you, I had big concerns about near. Big. Because they went from kind of obscurity to taking on Sweatcoin. Where's David? David Allen, here's your information for the day. So with near protocol, they 
uh, you know, everything is based, I mean, that is like 80% of the transactions are near protocol are from the, uh, the sweat token launch and everything that's going on right now. But they're able to, they actually held up to it. And I, one of the things that gave me a little bit of, of uh, good vibes was their nightshade protocol or how they're moving into sharding. And they're already, it's like zero, one, two, three. It's like a four step process. They're on, they just passed zero and they're on one. So they're actually in the sharding. They're actually a, a little bit ahead of, of Ethereum. Can they keep up with this pace? Not for sure, but it looks pretty good. And there's a reason why I think they're ranked 25 or 24. Also, just so you know, I would like to do a stake pool with near protocol. I'm just trying to figure out with the guys. But right now you can get like 11% just for staking on near. And I stake, I stake my near. I, I have two wallets. You go to near dot, what the heck is it called? Let me show you something. If you ever want to figure out where the wallets are, watch this. Go to CoinGecko. Da 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 da. Oh, 26. Sorry, a little wrong. And it's under wallets. You can click on near wallet and it'll take you to wallet.near.org. I got two. One I've secured with the mnemonic phrase, the other one I've secured with my Nano Ledger. Works out great, seamless, simple. And uh, I don't have to fear about any kind of, well, there may be a hacks, so who knows, I don't know. But it seems to be a little bit more aggressively secure. And uh, again, you can, you can stake it. I stake all my, well, not all, I've staked a good chunk of my near uh, with a couple different uh, uh, stake pool operators. And 11% is pretty good, I gotta tell you. So, good question. <laughs> good question, because I've been doing a lot with it. Ada Army, that's right. What? Oh, Bertie must be talking about Johnson softball. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Jay, Rob, I don't know. This fellow also said uh, the gas fees will not improve, although many other problems. His take is pretty dark. Is this, I don't know if you're talking about Ethereum or Cardano or near. <laughs> Our last chance until the next one. Remember, we're at 19,800. This is your last chance to buy Bitcoin under 20K. Just kidding. There'll be plenty of opportunities. The real question is, is, is this your last chance to buy Bitcoin above 19K? That's the bigger question. Or I should say sell above 19K, if you're gonna sell. I'm not gonna sell for a while. I do have that video coming out. Yes, it'll be out either this Saturday or next Saturday. And it's gonna talk about, we talk about DCA in the show all the time, right? Dollar cost average, buy and hold all that stuff, right? We don't talk about diamond hands. To me, I think that's stupid. But I do wanna hold for a while. What I wanna get into is uh, how I'm going to look at the next bull market when I'm selling and just take a look at some uh, indicators and exactly what it is. And the thing is, I wanna do that now because if I can put a plan in place now, I can stick to that plan a little better when things get hairy in the bull market because we get greedy, right? So if I put a little plan in now, I think I'll be a lot better place. Now, plans can change a little bit. We'll try to, we'll try to stick to uh, the centrality of what it is. Okay. Yeah, Jake Snake, that's a good name. Uh, I understand that people want to make money, but this seems too risky. I saw on CBMC that 70% of people in crypto are long-term losers. I think you're right. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. It's because, unfortunately, there's been this narrative that has been fed to people from everything from social media to news to publications, which is that uh, crypto is a get-rich place if you want to make a lot of money then you got to get into crypto and people think that they they hear about the dogecoin millionaires they hear about all the people and the and and the lambos and the yachts and they're like well i can do that i'll just put it into there and then just you know wait to ride it up and they don't come in and tell the bull runs and then of course they put in put in put in and then they get to a point where everything starts to drop and they don't really have that mentality like we do because if again if you're here you're not a tourist your mentality is way different from a normal investor. I'm just guessing. Because if you're here, when we're down, when our market is down, especially Bitcoin being down over almost 72% now and some alts being down 90% plus, there's a reason you're here because your mentality is different from the average investor. You understand that there's a long-term outlook and it's not about panic selling and selling on the decline. 
It's waiting, writing things out using some, just some basic principles that I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you what to do. Basic principles are look at things in the long haul, three, five, 10 years down the road. So Jake, when you said that, I can see it. And there's a reason why not everybody's a millionaire because people just don't get it. And that's just it. So I had this discussion with my wife today, actually. Let me show you this tweet. And this is what I'm talking about. It was from, uh, what is her name? Huck? Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go, right here. First of all, if you're not following me on Twitter, please do so. Usually I do a lot of things over there before I even do the live stream. And I was talking to her about this. Huck says, I sold a portion of my holdings to buy a house. This was in the, the bull market, I would assume. I thought I would feel awful after selling. I don't feel bad. I feel relieved, peaceful. I overinvested and stretched myself. Almost my entire net worth was in crypto. I feel that securing profits and diversifying is important. How many times, how, how much would you get attacked if you said that in, I don't know, March, April, May, June, July, 2021? If you said, hey, I sold everything. I sold a big chunk to pay for my house. You know how people would gang up on you and be like, you're stupid. You're not a diamond hands, you're paper hands and you're weak and da 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 you gotta hang in there. I want you to remember this, this tweet because right now, she and me and a bunch of other people, and you can read the, the responses, uh, they said, yeah, I did the same thing and uh, worked out pretty well. <laughs> Johnny Crypto. Diamond hands, ask I mean, pop by Reddit edges. No profit because you don't sell. Don't be that person. And so on and so forth. So yeah, just something to remember. All right. Uh, thoughts on, I think I answered this. Will you go to London again this year? I would love to. Uh, there's, some, there's some back and forth. I don't know if it's going to be in London again. I think Guy and his team are, are thinking of a different place. Don't uh, quote me, because they'll probably change some things. But I wouldn't mind going back to UK. I like the beer. The food, eh. Let's see. I really like the outdoor pubs. Those are cool. That's a good question. Johnny says, uh, how is Voyager going to send our coins back to us? Do we send them a MetaMask or other Coinbase wallet address and we receive our coins? Thanks. I'm not, uh, I don't think this will go through MetaMask. Or claim as well. I think the big question is, and this is what we, we covered yesterday, as far because there is a auction going on right now for Voyager, and it was let's say Thursday. It was, I think it was supposed to happen on Tuesday. They had to extend it because there was there was a bunch of offers, and usually, when you have a bunch of offers, usually people are out bidding, 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 and trying to get into this place. And I'm not saying that's exactly what it is, but usually when they extend things because they said we have a lot of bidders, it's not because people are bidding too low because they're kind of going up. Could be. So I think whoever wins that battle, finance, please, uh, then they will roll that in and decide what they want to do. If they want to uh, absorb that into their platform or they want to keep that going with new management or keep, this, keep the same people in place but with more oversight. I don't know. But uh, it's either going to be one of those things. So we'll see. But I don't think it's going to be MetaMask or Coinbase Wallet. It's a good question, Johnny. <laughs> Bear is Solana with no time, downtime. Gaffer Nates. Anytime, anytime I hear anything about sell, I just feel sick. Yeah. Me too. But I got to tell you. My, my thesis is this. I think we're in for some more pain macro wise and i don't think this was the the absolute bottom i just don't i could be wrong hope i'm wrong and if i'm wrong well we just keep dollar cost averaging but uh does anybody think that that the next bull run is going to be in 2023 2024 2025 2026 it means we got a lot of time i know people that lost some money like myself i did too but now it's the time to start over and think to myself okay if i get this back well okay let's say i take a haircut 50 percent 40%, 30%, or whatever it is off the top, and I get my crypto back, or I get money, or whatever they, they do for me. Great. And I'll just take that, never deal with them again, 
ever deal with kind of any kind of earn program and just move forward because we can only deal with the things that we have absolute control of. What do we have control of right now? Well, we take a look at the markets and go, is this a good time to invest? Should I invest? Should I do something else? Should I sit back? Maybe I should get into real estate. Maybe I should get into other kind of businesses. So with, with Celsius, we can't control it. So all we do is we get the information and we go from there. And that's it. Charlotte, it was great to meet you and guy in the UK. Good to meet you. I don't remember a lot of things these days, but uh, hopefully I get to see everybody again. That was fun. <laughs> Kelk Schitt's, Kelk Schitt's has a really, he's got some really good comments, and I, I read them from time to time, uh, even after this stuff. You can buy a lot of passports for those money with, with the money that 3AC has, and he's got a really good point. Mr. McPickle says Polkadot will most likely become irrelevant. Perhaps, who knows? I know there's a big push by Woods to uh, change everything over to as, as uh, decentralized as possible. I think that's one of the criteria that a uh, fan of the show Gary Gensler is talking about. Jose Rodriguez, what about Polygon? What about Polygon? Well, let me tell you, that is one of the alts I keep buying. A little mystery solved there for everybody. I think Polygon's going to be huge. I mean, look, there was this story we covered a couple of days ago about uh, <clears throat> Starbucks and rewards points. I thought it was dumb, but uh, I mean, it's just a step in the right direction. That's what, what's good. But Polygon itself is a powerhouse. Polygon and Polygon Studios. Polygon Studios is reaching out to uh, Web2 and uh, gaming platforms that are in the traditional free-to-play to move things over to uh, play-to-earn and then go from Web2 to Web3. They're doing a lot of big things. That's where I found out about Genso Kishi. Did a pretty good deal. On top of that, you know, they were just part of that. Um, it was they were one of six platforms to be uh, picked up by Disney uh, for their incubator program. And I got to tell you, that's pretty big. It's not about what you know; it's who you know. And if they can get in there and and network with a lot of bigger businesses and go, "Oh, we can help you bring you to Web three. We can help you to do these things. We've already done it." That's a pretty good thing. And it works, makes things cheap. So, and people always tell me it's not a layer two solution, Rob. It's a, it's a side chain. So sure, it makes things cheap. I don't really care. Yeah, Greg's, it's a bear market. It's going to be bleeding pump. It's going to be bleeding, but mainly sideways for a year. There's some, there's some bright spots out there. Just not many. Brian is bullish on Matic. Matic Polygon, sure. Corey goes, hey, Robin, Army got myself. I was a 37 Foxtrot. What years were you in? What was your MOS? So I'm old. I was in from 97 to 2005. And what I was called, and I, I know how old I am because when I say this, you're like, that's not what it was. 91 Bravo back in the day was an Army medic. That's what a medic was, 91 Bravo, you know? Run around trying to save people, great. Then there's another one called 91 Charlie, which is an LVN, which is a nurse. And now it's called something different. Then it became a 91 Whiskey M6, and now it's not even called that. I don't know what the heck it's called. So uh, that's how old I am. Uh, the, the MOSs, <laughs> the Military Occupational Specialty, I, whatever it was called back then is not what it's called now. So yeah, it was good times. Dig Swimming Dave says lots of wrenches. There's always lots of wrenches here. Dobby, how dare you? Put a fork in Zillica, it's done. I don't know, maybe. I don't own it. I don't own it because I, I really can't talk about it. <laughs> Jareed says, someone else can jump into Kelvin. It won't be me. Ah, digital cable. I'll be happily keep warning people of Kelvin. That's the thing. As time goes on, I think I'll still be around in three, five years. Who knows? And uh, we'll be talking about it. We will be talking about it. Do you think Zillow has a feature? I don't know. David Allen, Sweatcoin, yes. What's up with Dots? Again, they're trying to push for as much decentralization as possible. Node operators and things like that. So I still own Polkadot. I believe in it. I'm <laughs> looking at the Sweatcoin only because you shield sword. I will just say this. Remember, Sweatcoin's probably going to we're in a bear market don't don't hold me accountable like we're like hey it went from 
a fraction of a penny up to, I think it went to nine cents, which is pretty good. So you could nine X and now it's down to four cents. You jerk. How dare you lie to me? Like, look, it's going to be volatile. I think it's going to do pretty well. I'm going to actually be on Paul Barone's channel, Paul Barone Network to talk about it. And I will be just between us. I told Paul before, like, I was like, Paul, this new project's going to be great. You should look into it. It's like, man. V Boone, how's your health? My health is much better. So there was a time when I was just uh, sluggish, really going down tubes. I don't know what if it was stress or if it was something else, but uh, feeling much better now. Yeah. <laughs> first, first class scammers, stay away. Yeah, Audius. Rob, what about Audius? I think potentially the one to own that space. So I didn't really get an Audius. I had an opportunity to invest early and I missed it. So again, remember this folks. Um, there's going to be a lot of opportunities that, that's going to come to you. If it doesn't speak to you, you don't feel it, and you do your own research and you feel like this is not it, then you get you don't invest and just stay out. There's a lot better opportunities just to stay a lot of no's. And in the back of your mind, when you find something that works for you and you say, oh, that's a definite, then get into that one after you do a bunch of, of course, research. But with Audius, I just, I didn't really, it wasn't, didn't really speak to me. I don't know if they're they're building or not, so I really can't speak to it, Charles. I'm sorry. Charles Xavier. X-Men. Yeah, I know. How in the world is Charles H. only 34 years old? Guy works a lot. And look at me. I look awful. I'm 23 years old. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Keith, that's not true. Sweatcoin's a data mining operation. They just want to track you 24 hours a day. So look, look in the terms and conditions, and also... If you're so inclined, I don't, I don't blame you because you can't trust anybody, right? Treat everything as a scam until proven otherwise. Look at the terms and conditions. Talk about their data mining if you want to say that. And then also take a look at the deep dive that I did. There's a link in the description. It says Sweatcoin, da, da, da. I think it's at the 34-minute and the 34-minute mark. It's me, Oleg, who's the co-founder, and Ophir, who's the chief marketing officer. And I asked him that specific question. Do you guys data mine? Who do you sell it to? He's like, we don't do that because blah, 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 blah. Again, could everything be a lie and the terms of conditions be a lie? Sure, it could be. But this is the best information I have for you. Uh, hmm. Crypto Wolf. You can hack code, but you can't fake energy and time. Proof of stake is also similar to our current money and right system and decentralization will decrease over time sad day if you believe in freedom i don't believe you that i i don't well there is a caveat and this is this is actually one of those things so this is one of the one of the issues that came up with our stake pool with the cardano stake pool called d news and everybody wants just they say support and, and this really comes down to the community if you think about it and they say support single stake pool operators because what people were getting sick of was these big companies like a Binance or whoever else they'd open up because there is a, a K parameter there's only so much that you can stake with each individual Cardano stake pool I want to say 63 million 64 million correct me in the comments I always forget and uh, it used to be like 128 well they switched that to only 64 which was like these big companies was like who cares We'll just do, a, we have one stake pool, it's full. Now we're going to open up a second one. And before you know it, you had people with like 13, 14 stake pools. That's not very decentralized. You got a point. However, it is spaced out. So like with us, there was a big uproar because we did two stake pools right off the bat because we thought they were going to go from 128 to 64 to 31, and they didn't. So we have two stake pools, but they're only like 25% capacity, both of them. So it's not even one stake pool. So you can, if you take a look at it and go, if there's a bunch of companies that all just buy up all the stake pools and just have them right there, I could see your point. I don't think it's going to happen. But I do think that could, you could get a consolidation. It is what it is. Talking about the ETH merge. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Huh. I noticed the UFC advertising for VeChain. Plus, now I don't. I like UFC. Uh, TND Tesla, remind me tomorrow. I will definitely do that. Brian Mix says, I live by DCA and by the dips. 
the big question, the big question that I have for Brian and everybody, do you also have a plan to sell? That's the bigger question. I gotta tell you, it's easy to buy, super easy to buy. It's even harder, it's hard to not buy. Especially if you look at the, what's going on right now and you say, and you, and you think to yourself, oh, this is it, this is low. I'm like, I don't know. And then, I, then people will say, well, just go all in right now. I'm like, well, who knows? Maybe it could go down even lower. We don't know what's the next, what Jerome Powell is gonna do. We don't know what the energy crisis is gonna actually lead to, especially in Europe, with those crazy, unbelievable, not just the, I mean, not just the gas prices, uh, propane and, and everything else. I mean, and then of course the food prices are going up and then the housing market. I mean, I just saw a report that says that there's quite a decline. It's not as, uh, not pre-pandemic levels yet, but it's going there. So the question that I have is, is this the absolute bottom? I mean, and what's the, what's the optics? What actually brings us, brings us to a better stable GDP and uh, economy to grow so where people can actually spend? Again, I know there's a, there's a difference between the economy and the market, but it just, I just don't see it yet. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. David says, no Ledger X Bluetooth support for near wall. I'll shut up now. I just plug it in my computer and go away. It's uh, a good point. Joby says, time in the market and diversify. The only true way to make it. It's a good point. Just diversify. Just get out there. I mean, I diversify pretty hard. Speaking of... Yeah. <laughs> Jake 80. Problem is most moon boys are teenagers or 20 somethings, prime targets for crooks. We're all pro targets for crooks. Crooks, let's be honest. Sam says no tourists here. Probably so. It's, patience is a great, it's very hard to come by though. How many millions are you, Rob? Ah, uh, I do okay. Oh, was this? Oh, no, sorry. I try. Uh, Parrish, do you interview T experts such as Gareth Salloway? I got to tell you, man, I was lost. I was when Gareth Salloway came out. You can search for him. He's got a lot of great predictions. They've come true. Some haven't, but uh, recently he's been knocking it out of the park. And he's he keeps saying about how there's another uh, downward push. He says, I mean, it could go below 10k. I'm like, I don't know about that. But uh, if he gets that one right. I think he'll be like immortalized on social media for quite some time until he gets the next thing wrong. <laughs> and then we'll go there. Yeah, I'd love to have him on. I'll talk to uh, Paul. He's always has him on his show. Maybe he can give me the, the uh, connection. <laughs> I follow you on Twitter. I don't use Twitter. Don't. I got to tell you, Twitter can be a real cesspool. Des, hello, Des. Our currency lost only 70% of its value in 10 years, so no choice. Quite a bit. We printed a lot more, I tell you that. <laughs> Just take, you want to know how to be a millionaire in crypto? Take 2 million, invest it all, and then in a year you'll be a millionaire. That's a good point. It's, just, it's the same joke as far as angel investing. You want to know how to be a great angel investor? You want, or do you want to know how to be a, a millionaire in angel investing? Start off with being a multimillionaire. Yeah, see, there it is. Drunken G says, I feel I sold too early when Bitcoin is 30K before the peak of the bull run. See? So this new video I'm gonna put out, I'm gonna talk about hitting between hopefully 60 to 80% of tops and just going and being happy with it and being okay with it. And um, I, and some people will say we should never sell crypto. And I, I kind of get their, their point because they believe that, uh, that cash is going to collapse at some point and uh we're going to use all crypto and we could i just don't see that happening in the next two three years i just don't so again hedge your bets so when i talk about it there's a i'm going to talk about it. it's a 40 20 20 split and uh meaning in the beginning you you, you sell around 40 percent uh based on some indicators then you wait a little bit see if it rises up sell 20 rise up even more sell 20 but then you've only sold 80 percent but you still have 20% for that blow off top. And I don't think you should ever sell all your crypto. It doesn't make any sense to me personally. But I think if you do, I'm just going to ask you right now, 
people in the comment section, would you be okay selling 80% of your crypto on November, 2021? Or not even then, let's just say like August, 2021, when there was even a dip from uh, 60, I think Bitcoin is at 56K. Uh, total market cap was still above two, 2.5 trillion. Would you be okay with that? Selling 80%, just a question. And then buying back in, of course. <laughs> I love it when Guy turns off his accent. Yeah, a little fun fact. Uh, Guy is from Brooklyn. Very thick, very thick New York accent. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, crypto. Have you thought about putting your show on a podcast? I love your stuff. And since I'm always driving, I'm always looking for good stuff. Those two just thought. It is. I just don't know if I would translate to that. Because, I mean, I guess if you're listening to it, it's not like you need the visuals. I'm just reading anyhow or talking right now. I read all the questions. So, yeah, yeah I probably should. I tried it before. It just didn't take off. I gave it six months. And uh, maybe it's just me not knowing the, the minutia of what to do. <laughs> Shabo says, don't go to London last time crypto crashed. <laughs> Good one, golfer. That's a good point, Neville. And uh, this might lead me to my, my, one of my last points. And this is what I believe. Anyone that says you're, that they are holding forever is likely wanting you to be their exit liquidity. Think about that. I really want you to think about that hard. Everything that you've been told about holding on forever, hold, hold on for dear life, dollar cost, or, not, or be a diamond hands, diamond hands forever, right? I think sometimes when you get those people that say that, I think maybe deep down they're just like, I hope these suckers hold forever so I can dump on them. Just a thought. All right, so that's it for today. So look, everybody, I gotta get out of here. I got a bunch of other things to do. I'm trying to do that, um, put together that uh, obstacle course, charity event for kids. So I gotta go out there and do a little construction. So look, that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, all that good stuff. And that's it. So that's all we have for today. Tomorrow is, God, Lee, is Friday. And it'll be DCA on my show. So it'll be me, Ben from Into the Cryptoverse, and James from Invest Answers. If you have specific questions, hit me up on Twitter, and I'll answer these guys when we get there. Or just stop by. So that's it. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.